Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lecture. This is 2.5, part 3 in Math 085. In the previous video, we looked at reducing fractions, and we wrote them as their prime factors. And I'm going to do that here just as a little review. It's prime factors. This would be 3 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. 3 times 2 times 2. This one here is 40, which would be uh, 8 times 5. And 8 is 2 cubed times 5. So 8 times 5, 2 cubed times 5. And we talked about reducing them. Well, this is 2 times 2 times 2. And I should write it out, actually. 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. We can reduce one of those 2's to 1. And then put it back together. 3 times 2 is 6. And 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is, oh, I just noticed I didn't reduce it all the way. This 2 can cancel that 2 as well. Now we can put it back together. A 3 on top times 1 times 1 doesn't change it. 2 times 5 is 10. So 12 40ths reduces to 3 tenths. Now, Sometimes there's a quicker and faster way to come to this conclusion. Maybe you can look at these numbers and say, hey, I know that both of those numbers are divisible by 4. You can do that instead of this. So that's an alternative method. You can say uh, 12 40ths, divide the top by 4, divide the bottom by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Essentially, we're dividing by that special 1. 4 over 4 is just 1. And we get the same result. So you can do it this way. And for larger numbers and variables, this would probably be the preferred way. But if you can identify that larger factor, you can take it out right away. Maybe you divide it out a factor and realize, hey, I still see something in common. You can continue to do it again until you get to the reduced fraction. Now, there's one thing I want to note about uh, some fractions, especially when they contain variables. Here we have a rational expression, x times y over x. The only operation that is here is multiplication and division. When the only op operation is multiplication or division, you can do what we did here. You can just cancel. This x cancels that x, leaving me with just y. But if we have a sum or a difference, you cannot cancel terms. These are called factors. When they're multiplied, we call them factors. You can only cancel factors. This is a binomial. You cannot cancel one term of a binomial or a trinomial, anything that's separated by addition or subtraction. This would be an illegal operation. If you canceled that out and said, this is equal to y, that is not a true statement. That is an illegal operation. And if they had a math prison, you'd be on your way there. So don't ever cancel terms. You see addition or subtraction, don't cancel. Same thing here. I can't cancel these 3's. I can't cancel those y's. That's an illegal operation because these are not factors. These are terms. So be aware of that. And don't make that mistake, or math prison will be in your future. All right, let's look at multiplying fractions. If I'm multiplying fractions, I can simply multiply numerators and denominators. a times c over b times d. That would be the product if I multiplied a fraction. a times c over b times d. And then after I do that multiplication, maybe I'm going to reduce it like this, or I'm going to reduce it like that. It all depends on what a and b and c and d are. So we can multiply them simply by multiplying straight across the top, straight across for the bottom, and whatever those products are. As an example, I can say, OK, I can go 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And then I can choose to reduce. I know that both of these are divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 sixths is equivalent to 1 third. Now, I'm going to show you a nice tool that we can use that sometimes will help us tremendously. If we want to reduce before we 
uh, do the multiplication. Sometimes that can help happen, and it's very helpful. If we look, we can actually reduce across fractions because the only operations we have is multiplication and division. Multiplication and division are essentially the same operation, so we can just reduce across fractions. A 2 on top will cancel a 2 on the bottom, leaving me with 1 third times 1 over 1. Well, 1 over 1 is 1. 1 times 1 third is 1 third. So reducing, I didn't have to deal with a number like 2 6. I was able to reduce it first and then continue on to 1 third. All right, so we're going to look at a little story problem, an application to fractions. It says 4 out of 10 marbles are red. What fraction of marbles are not red? Well, 4 out of 10, I can write that as 4 per 10. This is the number that are red. Red marbles in this bag. But the question asks, what fraction of marbles are not red? And I suppose I need to have my question mark there. What fraction is not red? Well, if there's 10 marbles and four of them are red, I have to think about this as, well, how many marbles would still be in the bag if I took the four red ones out? Well, I would have six out of how many? 10. But what do I have to do with my fractions? Well, what we've seen in the previous video is we had to reduce our fractions. I recognize 6 and 10 are both divisible by 2. So this becomes 3 fifths. 3 fifths is the fraction of marbles that are not red. So 3 fifths are not red. All right, <clears throat> let's look at a few examples. And when we have the opportunity, reduce before you multiply. Let's look at this one, 2 fifteenths times 5 fourths. So we have an improper fraction, and we have a proper fraction. We're just going to multiply them together. I could multiply across the top and then multiply, multiply across the bottom. And whatever I get, I would then reduce. But I'm going to reduce first, because if I write this as its prime factors, 15 is 3 times 5. A 5 on the bottom can reduce a 5 on the top. 4 is 2 times 2. So I wrote that as 2 times 2. A 2 on the top can cancel a 2 on the bottom. So let's see, what's left on top? Well, this reduced to 1, and this reduced to 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 2 is 6. So I did that multiplication, and the biggest number I had to deal with was this 15 back here. When I did the multiplication, I had 1 6, relatively small numbers that we can work with. Let's look at this one here. Sometimes it's helpful to assess the fractions before we do any reducing, before we do any multiplication. I look at this and say 3 6, well, that's something that can be reduced. It's 1 half. So I could rewrite this as 1 half. I reduced the fraction itself before I even did anything else. And now I can look and say, hey, a 2 on top can reduce a 2 on the bottom. And the only thing is left is a 1 times 1 times 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 times 9 is 9. Multiplying by 1 is super easy. So if you have that opportunity to reduce something, simplify it before you do any operations. What if we have? negative fractions. Well, we've dealt with integers before. We could have positive numbers. We can have negative numbers. We can have positive fractions and negative fractions. So we have to recall some of our rules of multiplying. A positive times a negative. There's only one negative. So I do an assessment, and I know my answer will be negative. Whatever this fraction is, it's going to be negative. 5 will not cancel a 3, and they're both prime, and 1 isn't going to cancel anything in this 8. So now I can just multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is 5. And 8 times 3 is 24. So the answer here is a negative 5 24 Watch those signs and don't make those errors. We can also multiply fractions by using exponents. Exponents are just repeated multiplication. So I'm going to. I could write this out as negative 1 3rd times negative 1 3rd times negative 1 3rd times negative 1 3rd. 
That was crazy tedious, right? And then I can multiply a negative times a negative. Well, two negatives is a positive. Times a negative, now it's negative again. Times a negative, oh, now it's positive. To avoid those sign errors, we just remember, if I have an even number of negatives being multiplied, this is positive. By doing that assessment, I know that this is going to be a positive number. Do that assessment. So this is going to be positive. So now I could say 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, or 1 to the fourth. Well, 1 to any power is 1. 3 to the fourth, well, that's 3 times 3. And let's write that out, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So just to help us out, maybe we want to write it like that. But 3 to the fourth is 81, which is also 9 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So we get 1 81st. And it's positive because we assessed a negative to an even power or an even amount of negatives will give me a positive value. So we get 1 81st. What about this one here? Here we're multiplying by a whole number. Well, how do I multiply a fraction by a whole number? Well, we can think of any whole value as being over 1, because 1 times something doesn't change it. Dividing by 1 doesn't change it either. So we can think of it that way. And now, maybe we want to reduce. 6 is 2 times 3, and that 3 cancels that 3. So now I have a negative 2 times a 2 is negative 4 times y cubed over, over 1. Because this is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Anything divided by 1 doesn't change it. So if we can simplify it, we do so. We don't want to leave that 1 in our denominator. Let's look at this one. If I do this, I could say, hey, let's look here. 2 and 4, that can reduce to 1 over 2. I have an a here and three a's here. Well, if I expand that out to three a's, a times a times a, I could reduce one of them. Well, as a shortcut, I'm just going to reduce this by one. So instead of having three a's, now I only have two. Same thing here. I have a b on top and a b on bottom. This b will reduce one of those b's. So now I just have b to the first, or one b. And now I can put it back together. Everything on top. Reduced. Well, that means I have 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And I have b times 2 times a. And I'm just going to rewrite that 2a squared b. The coefficient, the highest term, the next. All right, let's look at this. I want you to try this one on your own. Do the same thing. You might want to write it out in expanded form. Or if you can take shortcuts, do so. But this will come with time and practice. And if the more comfortable you get, the more shortcuts that you can take. All right, and lastly, you travel 100 miles. 15 sixteenths of the trip is downhill. Maybe you're coming out of the mountains after a camping trip. How many miles are not downhill? Well, if you remember the last example with the marbles, if we knew how much we had that were red, we wanted to know how much we didn't have. Well, this is very. Similar, but we have to do a little bit of multiplication. You travel 100 miles, 15 sixteenths of the entire trip is downhill. We want to know how much is not downhill. Well, what's the remainder of the whole? Well, to have 16 sixteenths, I would need one more. So I have 1 sixteenth of the trip is uphill. Well, if we're going 1 sixteenth uphill, does that answer the question? No, it doesn't. It says how many miles. 1 16th isn't the distance I traveled. It is 1 16th of 100. Of tells me to multiply. 1 16th of that 100 was uphill. Now, to do that, we can write it over 1. And now we can do that multiplication and then reduce. But I don't want to reduce this or uh, multiply it before I reduce it. I look at 100 and I say, hey, I know that's 4 and 25. If I had a dollar, it'd be 4 quarters. And quarters are 25 cents. This is 4 times 4. And now I can see 4 and 4 will cancel. And now I can write it. 1 times 25 is 25. 4 times 1 is 4. 25 fourths of a mile. Well, an improper fraction 
is acceptable in a math class. Some of you might say, well, 25 fourths of a mile, that's crazy. Well, you can actually write that as a mixed number. And we'll talk about that in, in a future video. But 4 goes into 25 evenly uh, 6 times with a remainder of 1. 6 and a quarter miles. So <clears throat> go ahead and find these problems, work them out, do your homework, do the repetition, and you'll be successful in this class. Thank you for watching.